into a reality. And that is why a young boy who used to sell newspapers dreamt, worked and became the president of India who is called or who was called the president of people in fact. I am talking about Dr. Kalam. And that is the land where a child used to help his father in selling tea. He had a dream, he worked and becomes the Prime Minister of that country. I am talking of Prime Minister Modi. We are very proud of their land, we are very proud of these people, we are very proud of our democratic traditions. But believe me, nothing would have been possible if we didn't have the leaders like Sir Sayyid, Sayyid Ahmed Khan. So today let's pay tribute to, tributes to him, remember his teachings, remember his message, because this message would remain valid, would remain useful, would remain relevant for generations to come. Important as those who give good messages, but visionaries are those who give a message which remain there valid for eternity. Once again, we I thank you all to be here with us today and I thank the uh, Alligarians for giving us once again this opportunity of joining in their pleasure, in their happiness. It is also our happiness. Thank you very much, sir. The Arigan Muslim University Alumni Association is indeed very much honored that the President of the Republic of Mauritius, Dr. and Mrs. Amnagarit Fakim, has agreed to be our chief guest. Knowing her commitment to education, we have thought that her presence in an assembly when, where we are speaking of a visionary educationist like Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan would be befitting. Thank you, Your Excellency, for being among us. I'm sure everyone here would like to hear you. Can I please ask you to come on stage and say a few words? Excellencies, President Kasamti, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It is with great pleasure that I stand here before you to celebrate a great man and visionary, a man who helped shape the destiny of his country, a man whose faith in his people has left a legacy that is still being benefited by thousands regardless of race, color, and creed. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we are here to remember and celebrate Sir Syed Ahmed Khan. Sir Syed once said, and I quote, my advice to all of you is, do only that which you believe is right, and do not do anything in which you do not believe and this is the only thing on which depends success in both the worlds." Unquote. The righteousness that Sir Sayyid believed in and which guided his path deserves to be commemorated, dispersed and kept alive in the memories of younger generation, lest we forget his immense contribution in building modern India and his wisdom which can still shed light to the obscure path that all nations have to tread because of ignorance and intolerance. Sir Sayyid was born nearly 200 years ago with a silver spoon in his mouth. 
Being of noble descent, he could have lived a life of opulence. Instead, he chose the path of perseverance. He lived at a time where history was at a turning point. He witnessed the uprising of the oppressed and realized the frustration that arose from the disregard of the opinion, culture, and religion of individuals. This led to his resolve for a better society. He became a strong champion of modern education while advocating the need for Islamic education. This great visionary established schools and founded the scientific society. He is known to have said, the seeds that we sow today may grow up a mighty tree whose branches like the banyan of the soil may take firm roots in the ground and in turn themselves send forth fresh vigorous samplings and its alumni may go forth to the length and breadth of the land, preaching the gospel of truth, honesty, piety, and the large heart and tolerance. Thus, his aim was not only to arm young men and women to face the challenges of the day, but also to urge them to spread the thirst for education and dreams of a better life to all. Today, thousands of alumni spread across the world are the direct beneficiaries of the educational foundation that he has laid to build a modern, prosperous, and responsible society. His journey has been truly remarkable. Despite persecution from the rulers of the day and opposition from the conservative-minded, he tread along his chosen path. Sir Syed often said that he was not politically inclined. He was just a man who was driven by the passion to help his people, nonetheless, he is recognized as a great man and a great leader. Somebody once said that, and I quote, great leaders communicate a vision that captures the imagination and fires the heart and minds of those around them, unquote. In this case, the vision of Sir Sayed for universal education and the pearl of wisdom transcend time and is still as much vivid as it was 200 years ago. I strongly believe that each, if each one of us develop such values of patriotism, love for our brothers and sisters, and overcome the fear of oppression due to walking along the right path, we will have the enlightened society that will be paving the way for a better future. I'm really looking forward to hear the memorial by Dr. Mohibullah Kuk, Associate Professor of the Department of Political Science at the Aligarh Muslim University, and for the sharing of some of the wisdom that Sir Syed has left in his legacy. The efforts of Aligarh Muslim University Alumni Association to commemorate the lives, saying and teachings of Sir Sayed is indeed laudable. I wish to thank the Aligarh Muslim University Alumni Association for organizing this annual, annual Sir Sayed dinner in collaboration with the High Commission of India, thus giving me an opportunity to share these moments in the honor of Sir Sayed with all those present here tonight. I thank you for your attention. As a token of our gratitude, Your Excellency, I would like to call some of my Algerian friends who will present. Ah, they are here already. <laughs> they are behind us. We would like to present a bouquet. To you, Your Excellency, to thank you for your presence. To your thank you very much. We would we would also like to present a bouquet to Mrs. Murgal, if you could please on the stage. <laughs> to express our heartfelt thanks <laughs> to uh, you also and uh, through you to His Excellency Mr. Mudgal for the support that he has always been giving us. Talking of presentation of bouquet, I would like to call on stage 
Her Excellency, the Ambassador of Egypt, who would like to, who has expressed the wish to make a short presentation of uh, a token also. Thank you again, that was a bit unexpected and we are all really very touched. We have now, ladies and gentlemen, reached the time for our main function, the memorial lecture. We are indeed privileged to have in our midst an intellectual of high caliber who is a pure product of Aligarh Muslim University since he has uh, done his undergraduation, his master's and his PhD at the Aligarh Muslim University, at the AMU. Right? He is undoubtedly well qualified to uh, deliver this memorial lecture on Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan today. He is uh, my junior, you know in Aligarh we have a very strong tradition of juniors and seniors. He is my junior but I am proud really to present him uh, today. Dr. Mohib Bulhak, in fact, is assistant uh, professor in the Department of Political Science of the AMU. His areas of interest are international politics, uh, minority rights, human rights, terrorism, globalization, and political Islam. Dr. Haq is, in fact, a prolific writer, and he has contributed several articles, research papers, chapters in edited books on socio-political issues of national and international importance. He has presented papers in national and international seminars and conferences in India and abroad, namely in the UK, in Dubai, in uh, Abu Dhabi. He has authored a book entitled International Terrorism and Violence, a Human Rights Perspective. He participates in discussions on television channels and is a panelist and an expert in these programs. Uh, Dr. Mohib Bulhak won the gold medal for securing the first position in uh, MA Political Science in 1995 at AMU. And he's also the recipient of President of India, Dr. Shankar Dayal Sharma Gold Medal for Excellence. Dr. Mohib Bulhak, please come on stage. for the kind words. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Mauritius. Your Excellency, the former President of the Republic of Mauritius. Your Excellency, High Commissioner of India. Excellencies of the Diplomatic Fraternity. The President of the Aligarh Muslim University Alumni Association of Mauritius. All the dear Aligarians present in this hall. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Before touching upon the topic of today's memorial election that you all know, Sir Sayyid, a man for all seasons, I would like to thank the organizers for giving this great honor to a very small person like me to share my thoughts about one of the most influential personalities of the 19th century, Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan. I feel proud not only to be able to see this beautiful country for the first time, and enjoy the kind hospitality extended by the government of this great country. I also feel proud for having the honor of sharing my views with such distinguished and august dignitaries. This is indeed a privilege I will always cherish. 
I am extremely grateful to the Alumni Association of Mauritius and the High Commission of My Great Country, India for extending all possible cooperation for me to come over here. Ladies and gentlemen, it is said that time influences everyone. But there are very few who influence time and change the course of time. Sir Sayyid was indeed amongst one of the most influential personalities, greatest men who shaped and guided the course of historical development in the Indian subcontinent in 19th century. I have a written text of my memorial lecture, but I am not going to read uh, this written text. It's better to share uh, you know, my thoughts and whatever I have written in this memorial lecture and suggested by my seniors here and also the High Commissioner of my great country. Basically, when we talk of Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan, I am reminded of the quotation of great political philosopher Karl Marx when he says that the philosophers have interpreted the world. The point, however, is to change it. You know, the time that Sir Sayyid found himself in, the circumstances under which he found himself in, were so difficult for all Indians and especially for his own community. It was the, what we call first war of independence, 1857 revolt that is most of the time written in the books of history. Basically the armed struggle against British colonialism was already started in 1757 by Sirajit Dawla in Battle of Plassey and from 1757 to 1857 for 100 years we will find rulers, they have been fighting against the British government but because of scientific and technological advancement uh, you know, the British army was always able to defeat them in most of the battles. 1857 was very different from all these wars and battles squire because it was the culmination of a process of colonization that was started by the British government right from the very beginning. A country, you know, a country of continental size and I proudly say that India is not a country but a civilization, a great civilization having uh, 5,000 years of deep rooted values and all. That country was colonized by the Britishers. And after that what happened? That the revolt of 1857 or the first war of independence uh, that whatever we call, you know, it was the symbol of Hindu Muslim unity. Mangal Pandey starting, you know, the revolt from Merit, people reaching to Delhi, installing an old ruler, Mughal ruler, Bahadur Shah Zafar as the emperor of India. You know, that shows the greatest kind of unity and the river and the respect that the Mughal Empire enjoyed in the eyes of the people at that time. And that is also the symbol of Hindu-Muslim unity. From there, what has started, you see, that Jawaharlal Nehru, the first Prime Minister of India, and credit goes uh, to him for making our country a great country, as uh, the first Prime Minister, he admits in his writing, that the hands of the British heavily fell upon Muslim because you know there was already a fatwa or fatwa issued against the British government that Muslim should fight against them. They have colonized this country, and also the emperor was installed as the ruler. And the emperor was a Muslim, so that's why they concluded that there was a conspiracy by the Muslims to dethrone the British Empire from India. And this was the mighty British Empire about which it is said that the sun never used to sit in British Empire. So this was the British Empire and after that what happened that tickets were issued for the Muslims to live in Delhi. Most of them, you know, most of the Muslim nobility that was thrown out of Delhi, Awadh, Delhi, Rambu, other centers of Muslim glory, they all were destroyed by the Britishers. And at that time, you know, stagnation, decay, pessimism that was looming large on the community and on the Indians in general. The, you know, a civilization, a great civilization cannot be colonized in 100 or 200 years. A civilization which has a glorious tradition of 5,000 years. So this was the reason that when political power was monopolized by the British Empire at that time, the social reformers, you know, they came up. They came up to guide the community. Raja Ram Mohan Rai in 19th century started the movement for social reform, for modern education. 
He is the first modern man of India and he is known for developing scientific tempo, scientific outlook among the people in this uh, great country. Then others followed. There were reformist movements as well as revivalist movements. Among the Muslims, the reformist movement, you know, they started very late. And the reason was simple. The Muslims who basically from 12th century to 19th century, they were in power in Delhi as the ruler of India. They hated everything that was British in nature. They thought that they have removed them from power. And this was the reason even the scientific outlook, modern education, western education, whatever was there, they were not ready to accept. You know, there is a famous poet, Abhiraj Abadi. He said, you know, the things that were very positive, it has been accepted by all the social scientists in the different parts of the world that colonialism has also been a harbinger of change. It has been also an agent of modernization. So when the British government was going for modernization, for example, time writers were introduced, for example, hand pipes were introduced, you will find telegraph was introduced, railway was inaugurated, all these things. Muslims were not ready to accept it. They were saying, and what Akbar al says, if you understand Urdu, he said that harf parna pada hai type ka. Means, you know, whatever is written by type, we are studying that, and we are, we are reading that, and that is something like, you know, Makru or Aram prohibited in Islam. Harf parna pada hai type ka. You know, they were not ready to accept. The people were not ready to accept. And remember this was the time in the Ottoman Turkish Empire for 240 years, there was a fatwa issued against time writer. When there was knowledge explosion in Europe, there was knowledge explosion in different parts of the world, the Orthodox clergy and the Shaykh Islam of the Islamic Empire has said, you know, that if you are reading anything from Time writer, it means that is haram. At that time, it was very difficult to convince Muslims to go for modern education, to go for Western education, to go for scientific education. There were people who were trying to revive the past, and there were many people who were living, you know, they were in deep slumber, they were thinking of the past glory, and they were not doing anything. Those who were trying to revive the past, they were giving a call, for example, you know, the go back to Quran, go back to Vedas, go back to all these kind of, you know, revivalist tendencies were very strong among Muslims and other, all other communities uh, in India at that time. Sir Sayyid al was a reformist, like Raja Ramon Rai. He said, you should be forward looking. Whenever, the, you know, if a problem is diagnosed wrongly, then the remedies that are going to be suggested, they will not work. They are also going to be incorrect and wrong. So that there was a wrong